In this video, I'm going to be giving you guys my review of the Mavic 2 Pro after using it for two weeks. Now, I don't usually come out with reviews as soon as I get the drone. I want to test it out. I think I'm ready to give you guys my pros and cons on this new drone by DJI. I have some notes here on my phone, so I try not to forget anything. So let's go ahead and get this started. Now, starting with the pros, the first thing I'm going to talk about is D-Log and image quality. Now for the Hasselblad camera or sensor, this drone has really good image quality. Now, that being said, if you are gonna shoot D-Log, you obviously will need to know how to process it in post-production. So it's kind of like a pro and con at the same time. The next thing we're gonna talk about is its stability out of the box. Seriously, as soon as I got this flying outside, it was awesome, I really trusted it. I knew I had full control of the drone. Now, as far as the propeller noise, it's a little bit louder than the Mavic Air, but for the size of the drone, it's pretty freaking quiet, to be honest. It doesn't sound as loud as the Phantom 4 Pro. It's quiet enough for such big propellers. All right, the next thing I'm gonna talk about is the adjustable aperture. Now, in the Mavic Air and Spark, you can't adjust apertures. In the Phantom 4 Pro, you could, and I really miss that about the drone. But in the Mavic 2 Pro, they brought that back, and man, that adjustable aperture really comes in handy because you don't technically have to buy ND filters if you shoot in non-straight, noon, daylight, shadowy, uh, scenes. If you shoot later in the day or earlier in the morning, you probably won't even need to buy ND filters. So that's definitely a pro where you can change your aperture. Okay, the next thing is manual focus. Uh, the Spark and the Mavic Air did not have ma manual focus, so I'm glad that it made it back to the Mavic 2 Pro. Now, manual focus is pretty important because sometimes with touch focuses, it's not that accurate. So it's better if you actually focus yourself instead of allowing the camera to focus for you. Next thing we're gonna talk about is battery life. Now for such a small enough drone, I mean, look at this thing. It's like the size of a water bottle. For a small enough drone, I think the battery life on this is just perfect. It's such, a, it's on a sweet spot. When I'm recording with a Mavic 2 Pro, I can fly up there and get all my shots and not worry about how much battery I have left. That's pretty amazing because with the smaller drones, you feel kind of rush when you're up there. The battery in this drone just gives me enough battery for me to actually compose the shots, focus, and change settings while mid-air. All right, the next thing we're gonna talk about is the size and weight. Now, it's not a Spark size, it's not a Mavic Air size but it's not a Phantom 4 Pro or DJI Inspire either. It's the perfect middle. And this is honestly probably the best travel around drone in the market right now, as far as the size and weight. And talking about weight, it doesn't feel like it's gonna get blown by the wind. When I was in Norway flying the DJI Mavic Air, I had to actually not shoot in one spot when I would have absolutely loved to shoot because the wind was just so high and the Mavic Air was just getting blown away by it. But with this drone right here, now I can have a little bit more peace of mind as far as it getting blown away by the freaking wind because A, it's pretty heavy enough and B, it's pretty fast. It has a little bit of power in it. It's crazy, it's powerful. So I don't have to worry about the wind as much as I would worry about when using the Mavic Air. The next pro I'm gonna talk about about the drone are the sensors. It has a crap ton of sensors. When you're flying in the air, there's just so much going on. And it's really nice to have all the sensors on this drone because it tells you so much information. It warns you about where you're going and if you're gonna hit something. So having a lot of sensors on a drone, again, just gives you that peace of mind when flying because you already have so much stuff that you have to worry about when you're up there. All right, the last pro of this drone is the price point. And I know what you're thinking, it's like $1,400, how is that a pro? If you think about how you would probably shoot an aerial footage back when portable drones were around, you have to get the pilot, hire the helicopter, 
gas the helicopter, get a camera, get a gimbal for the camera. If you start adding all that up, you can just imagine how much money that would cost, right? Now, this drone for $1,400 shoots 4K, shoots D-Log, right? So, if you compare it to the old days and what we can do with this now for the price point, it's not even fair. <laughs> you can do so much with this drone for just a small amount. Okay, let's move on to the cons. And for the cons of this drone, I really don't have that much. And probably just being very nitpicky. They're not actually cons, but there's always something bad, right? Now the first con we're gonna talk about is the touch focus. What I mean by touch focus is when you're trying to autofocus using your thumb or when you touch your phone to focus, it's not always spot on. Just don't trust the touch focus all the time to get focused with this drone because it's pretty much hit or miss. Okay, the next one is gonna be the hyperlapse rendering only 1080p. I know it's probably asking too much because it's such a small drone. I know it takes a lot of processing power to pretty much render a 4K, 5K, but the hyperlapse feature unfortunately only renders 1080p in Rec. 709 color profile, which is very unfortunate. Now the last thing that I don't like about this drone, and again, probably is just being very nitpicky, just for the size of this drone, it's probably asking too much, and that's D-Log in intelligent modes. Now I did not know that when using intelligent modes, you cannot shoot D-Log. Intelligent modes such as Dronies, Helix, all of those modes you cannot shoot and D-Log using the Mavic 2 Pro. And that's probably the biggest bummer out of this drone is just being able to shoot D-Log in intelligent modes. Granted, you can still shoot point of interest in D-Log. This drone is really special. This drone is more for like advanced users. I mean, granted, it's so easy for you to use, but for you to take advantage of all the goodies that comes with this drone, I think that you should research more and learn more about it before you ditch out $1,400. But if you want to go from zero to hero and learn a lot about droning, then go ahead and get this. But if you're just toying around, you're not really serious about doing it. If you just want to drone around, fly around, you don't worry about camera. I think the Mavic Air is the best one for you. So this is an amazing solid drone. I am still debating whether to keep it or keep my Mavic Air. It's, it's a really tough choice because like I said, this is really for professionals, guys. Uh, the quality is just so high quality. The video that comes out is really high quality. And I'm just really, I'm just a YouTuber. So uh, we'll see what really happens in the future. But yeah, if you guys have any questions, let me know and I'll see you guys later. And I did turn off the lens flare because apparently it was very annoying. So you're welcome.